Welcome to my most humble of workshops, which is a flurry of sawdust, glue, and varnish. Montagnez is my name, master sculptor. One of those who, with steady hand and silver chisel, patiently carve out from the wood the faithful shapes of our true saints, so that they might be contemplated and revered by the devout. No trace of light remains in my glassy eyes, yet still I know what thou seekest and needest. For are we not all penitents on this earth, in some way? The miracle proclaimed that, as my profession was that of a master sculptor, I should carve in wood the figure of the Most Blessed Lady as my last work of art. Penitent one, I beg you, help me in this, my final piece of work. Seek out for me the finest chisels and tools, the most wondrous of pigments, and the most delicate of varnishes. And I can sculpt for thee figures that will fit into the altarpiece you carry on your back, like this very one I offer to thee here. Please accept this as a gesture of my unending gratitude. It is but the first piece of many more I shall carve for you. Come closer and contemplate this delicate tumbaga. The embroidered shawls, the silk dresses. You are in Rehima's shop. My goods are my home, my bed. They are as much a part of me as I am of them. You point, and this diligent arm will surely grant your request. Blessed are we, feast your eyes upon. We have no more item, pray come back later.
Stop. This sacred place is about to crumble around our very ears. And I have barely strength enough to support the entrance to our chapel. My name is Regula, and this body, which towers over you, is nothing more than the punishment for an abhorrent sin I committed many eons ago. The miracle is just, and granted me the vigor to sustain this threshold. However, after interminable efforts, I feel my strength gradually waning. With each tremor, these merciless rocks sink deeper into my flesh. Should my arms yield to the weight, the shrine will be buried, and the saint never again venerated. For pity's sake. Hear my cry. Between the tremors, I am sure I heard the collapse of some of the chapel walls. I am convinced that a passage into the sanctuary has opened up from somewhere within this labyrinth. I implore you, find it before it is too late.
for which I have long yearned has finally cometh. Bear the countenance of the Shroud to that place where it ought never to have ventured. The statue. The saint. Penitent one, now that my face has been restored, I may at last speak to you. My devotees will return to this chapel by virtue of your actions, and the sacrifice of the Blessed One, who will never be forgotten. O oh, Regular, seek my forgiveness no more, for you have it. Now you're by my side, and can rest your weary shoulders in my arms. As for you, Penitent One, accept this in memory of Regula. I am forever grateful. May my blessing be with thee. Allow me to present you with a new piece for your silver altarpiece. Figure of the sinuous mists, pay us with the false coin. Now pray, lie down on the cold stone and let the black curtain envelop you in darkness. To your reverence, I address myself. After seeing myself freed from grief following long years of regret, I dreamt I saw some bees create a honeycomb of sweet honey 
inside the now empty recesses of my soul. But the miracle does not distinguish between dreams and truth, and my dreamt punishment became incarnate. O oh, creatures of the miracle, what do you want from me? Your reverence's visit to this repentant, punished sinner shall not be in vain. Take this as a gift. If perchance this gift I give you should break, losing its worth, return it to me. This honey, which doth not cease to flow, will be able to undo the damage. Let the bees continue in their sorrowful work. Come back here. And you may die, perhaps even rot away before my very eyes, but that will not help you. I can wait as long as it takes, long after those insatiable worms have finished their repulsive feasting. In the end, I will discover that secret thou hast been concealing from me since the first dusty cobweb appeared under the eaves of this home, and since the first wrinkle marred thine already pale and bony forehead. But for now, behave yourself. Can you not see we have a guest at our table? Sit down, sit down. Welcome to this humble table. My name is Castula, for that was what my parents so desired. It is a great rarity these days for footsteps to echo through these lonely halls. And believe me, yours have not gone unnoticed. What dost thou seek here? Dost thou crave the same fate that befell so many unfortunates who ended up possessed by the very gold they sought to make their own? Yes, this manor is awash with mysteries, secrets, and if only I could find the hiding place of my brother Trifon's manuscript, perchance I might have at least one less mystery to solve. How deluded you are. Did you think you could keep it from me any longer? Do not listen to this brother of mine, dear visitor. Do not believe his untruths. If we had my brother's manuscript, we would know each and every last one of his secrets. Sister, stern, terrible Castula. 
Seekest not to deceive me with your detached expression? That serene indifference that becomes thee so well? I know you hear my words, even though the look you return to me arises from the depths of the shadows themselves. Welcome, visitor, to this table of reproach and intrigue. My name is Trifon, for that was what my parents so desired. Pay us no attention to my sister's words, nor her silences, but just by looking at her withered face one can sense her malicious smile. No, I am no longer interested in your confabulations. Thine understanding has long been governed by a dastardly imagination. I remember when you had that old blue-green headscarf. <laughs> it was so soft. You kept saying that it transported you back to other times, to distant memories. If you held it now in thine hands, perchance you might cease with the constant accusations. You would never have lost it if, just for once, you had stopped rummaging through my affairs. What does this mean? It's blank. I can't hear you. Where have you gone, Trifon? Don't leave me. Stay. Even with intrigues. Even with secrets. I no longer hear your voice. I do not believe you have gone. Is this another of your deceptions? <laughs> the dark sockets of your skull no longer return my gaze. What memories, what old dreams have taken you from us. I may have something for you. If so, be sure to take it and go. Allow me to present you with a new piece for your silver altar piece. Allow me to present you with a new piece for your silver altar piece. May the bells chime twice, for the vigil begins. And we shall sink into a sea of mourning.
May the bells chime twice, for the vigil begins. And we shall sink into a sea of mourning. May the bells chime twice. And we shall sink into a sea of mourning.
<laughs> Find the wax seeds and plant them before me. <laughs> Find the wax. <laughs> From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. <laughs> From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. <laughs> From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. <laughs> From every seed, a sister of wax shall sprout. Call upon them all to have mercy on my child. <laughs> My child, you are now free from punishment. My body will melt and become one with this high tower that you can see from afar. And I will watch you from its battlements. Go with the sisters. My child, penitent one, pray take this token of gratitude. Blessed be your heart. I am at your service, Penitent One. I have carved a new figure for your altarpiece. Pray take it. of uncompromising will. My brothers and I are grateful to thee. See how they rise as if the weight of their bodies had been taken away from them and with it, their sorrows. The road is now complete. The highest point of this garden awaits thee.
streets fill us with joy, penitent one. You shall always find a home in this garden. We surrender ourselves to your charity. Your deeds, you shall always, we surrender. I am at your service, penitent one. I have carved a new figure for your altarpiece. Pray, take it. Tribute to honor, to honor. on high welcomes thee. Above, dark clouds gather and swirl in vile serpentine dances. The child is born. Cast your eyes upon our shop window. We are out of stock, penitent one. We are grateful. I am at I have carved a new figure for your altarpiece. Pray take it. Let not your spirit be grieved. The honey will repair all the damage done to my gift. Take it and behold its restored splendor. The bees of the miracle advance, creating more hollows in this honeypot that is now my body. Let not your spirit be grieved. The honey will repair all the damage done to my gift. Take it and be... this miraculous honey. And then my soul will be forever sweet and golden. Let not your spirit be grieved. The honey will repair all the damage done to my gift.
Take the figure, and behold its unmatched, dazzling, golden radiance. the price for my liberation with his fragile flesh and withered skin. He still remains, but his voice is now mine. One last reward I offer thee in exchange for the continued satiation of your guilt. Come back when the burden weighs heaviest upon you, and then you might satiate my hunger. Your service, penitent one. I have carved a new figure for your altarpiece. Pray take it. <laughs> 